In 1981, Evil Dead was released. A little fun project by Sam Raimi and some of his friends from school made this short, low-budget horror movie. It's not that short, but a low-budget horror movie, and it was loved by audiences. Six years later, he released The Evil Dead 2. Even though this was labeled as a sequel and it does tie into the first film, it is also a virtual reimagining of the first film in itself. It's a lot more action-packed, it's, it's a lot more tighter of a story, and I feel like the game we're talking about today sits in that same realm. And if you're wondering what we're talking about we are talking about fable 2 which to get distracted for a second this intro is just god tier i mean this intro alone i i enjoyed more than almost any cutscene i saw in fable 1 the fact that a bird craps on your head is how the game begins it just establishes the humor that's going to be set in this game which is an exaggeration or uh, more of a capitalization of the best moments of fable 1 in my opinion but the game starts out with you meeting this uh this snake oil salesman for a lack of a better he's a shyster he's a He's a con man, but he has a, um, a little box that's supposed to be magic that grants you a wish. We all know what my wish would be, to make my below average peanuts average. But you sit here and you listen to it, and then this sexy uh, wizard lady, who has like nice, nice tatas, tells you like, Oh, you don't believe in magic? What are you guys, a bunch of bitches? And we're like, no, we're just children. She's like, fucking bitches. But I mean, look at those. Was I right or was I right about those tatas? But anyways, she, she kind of alludes that magic is real and that the world's kind of forgotten about it and it's sad that people do not believe in magic anymore. And then she walks off like a freaking G, bro. She she has all the skibbity toilet, bro. She just uh, zips out of here like nothing. She's a king, fucking based, red-pilled. So this is where the Evil Dead comparison comes in. This game starts off very similar to the first game because, again, you're starting as a child and now you're running errands trying to get money. Like, one of them, instead of just guarding uh, somebody's uh, crap, this time you're saving it from roaches. And instead of destroying it for some douchebag kid, you're, you're offered to destroy it by, like, the mafia. So it's, like, amplifying. It's, it's adding in more action, just like the Evil Dead, and that's why I made that comparison. And even though there is a ton of similarities in the story of this game, I do not believe that's a bad thing like a lot of people will say about Fable 2. When I first started this game, I mean, this opening section, I had more fun than I had in the entirety of the opening section of the first game. I mean, when you run into this little bully guy, the fact that he just like headbutt, cold cocks your sister, knocked out on the ground, count to 10 seconds, this bitch has a concussion, that is a way better reason to beat somebody up other than somebody's just picking on somebody than like in the first game. This game amplifies things. It takes what was done in the first game, says, hey, you know, we, we, we like what we did in the first game, but I think we can do it better. So they did. And once you do get the magic box after collecting your five gold coins, you make your little wish and it seems like nothing happens. And at this point of the game, it's like, oh, let's just go home. And I'm like, all right, where, where do we live? We live in a box. Bro, you're fucking broke. Ha! Brokies, dude. Look how poor they are. Let's laugh at the poor people for a second. You live in like the uh, like equivalent of a house made out of pallets, bro. You live in some like Portland swag. Now, your wish does work, though, because magic is real, goddammit. So is Santa Claus. He comes to my house every night and molests me. I mean, says hi to me because he's cool and he's not hes not a, hes not on a watch list. But you, you meet the leader of this castle, right? And you, he, he's like, oh, you guys are cool. What happened in the magic box? And you're like, I don't know. And he's like, go stand in this circle. If somebody tells you to stand in a circle and you're a child, just don't. Especially if you're poor. If you think you're going to be able to live in the castle, bro, they're lying to you. And this dude just straight up pulls out a gas and sends your sister to nightmare land like check this out dude just caps her in the chest you're now an only child without parents you're an only child orphan like whoa and then he pulls that shit on you but i mean i'm like superman dog i don't get put down and like you get straight up shot out of a window this shit has so much velocity going against your like 10 year old chest that it just blasts you outside and then you look at this look at this slow motion mad max shit and look how far you fall it was like 80 billion miles in the air and somehow somehow when you're on the ground like basically dead the dog you saved from earlier which i forgot to talk about that's what that dude was kicking on the ground the one that cold cocked my sister yeah that he was kicking a dog first real real class act but anyways the witch lady like 
brings you back to life in like 10, it uh, zooms 10 years later, and right away, I have to test out my Riz game, and I have to say they upgraded all of the mechanics for like, flirting and all your other shit, it's actually easy to use, because the first game had a nightmare mechanic system to use, and you're sent right into your first dungeon, this game like, starts kicking out right away, and obviously bro, I'm checking for treasure, and this game's even better, because you have a dog, so the dog will just be like, yo, homie, check out this treasure, isn't it pretty skibbity, and uh, yeah, I know, you're like, Ah, oh, cringe, he's using stupid words. You know what? Pound of sand up your butthole and then pull it out and so shove it up your urethra because I don't care. But yeah, obviously I'm going to collect all the books and all the garbage. And after this, I started going further in and I find out, and yes, I took off all my clothes because I wanted to see how hot she was before I turned her into like Lizzo or like Hillary Clinton because for some reason, just the uglier you can make your person in this game, the like hotter they are. But I found out there was a chest that said I had to go to Fable2.com, but that doesn't exist exist anymore and I found out it's a DLC and I found out in that DLC there's Halo armor and the reason I'm telling you this while this battle's going on because I had to do this battle anyway to open a road but I also did some research after this battle and I'm like well I need this DLC and I'm not big on cosmetics but Halo armor come on you tell me you didn't want to play like Halo in like a fable universe if you don't like that then you obviously are the type of person that like licks slugs and then has sex with frogs well after I, I'm done contending with the hills have eyes and I put him to night night mode I go back and and I get my junk. And you can see the little fable pop up again because I wanted to make sure that you could read if you had the capabilities. I go into my menu and here it is. First off, I had to like figure out where the clothing shit was because I was like confused because the, the map, it's just enough different from Fable 1 and I played it recently enough to be confused. But yeah, I, I wanted to show off my like hype body and then I put it on, bro. I got the Fable Halo grind. Bro, I'm Master Queef, baby, because I'm a woman character character and women queef you know what i mean and so now i am master queef the legendary hero of fable i got fucking a master cheeks grind i mean look at that booty look at them tits so right away i have to go into the town and i have to make a purchase i need to like facilitate that i'm better than everyone and i go buy a condom i don't know why i bought a condom i just thought it was funny that you can buy condoms in this game it's kind of fucking awesome yeah no you can buy condoms everywhere it's badass i don't understand why this isn't a mechanic in every game i don't want to have kids with just any jabroni even though most of the time i'm lesbian in this game because based but if i do want to have children hell yeah also there's jobs in this game which are pretty freaking fun I, I got so lost in these jobs i mean even when i went and found out more about the story i get to this little area where sexy witch ladies like well long ago there was a tower and a guy tried to combine all the energy and magic in the world and then he used it and pulled it in thinking he could manipulate it and uh, while he rubbed his uh, his nose and picked it and then rubbed his boogers on his nipples and then was showered himself in Vaseline he, he lost control of the power and it, it unleashed on all of the fable land do you see my sparkly powers I bet he was coming so hard during this the first guy to like try to channel this power he's just like and he just goobered everywhere he just gloop duped all over the world and it just caused this explosion that uh, that destroyed the first land and you find out the dude from the beginning of the game wants to do this because he wants to bring his wife and kid back honestly i mean if i lost my wife and then my my future child i would i'd go to the ends of the earth to try to figure out a way to bring him back i don't feel like that's that evil but anyways i went back to being a blacksmith because this shit's fucking based and awesome and i had a blast doing it i mean nothing is better than just how working the shaft of a hammer i mean uh, yeah just working the shaft is great so i bet now you're wondering why am i in an iceland fighting like uh, like demons the demons from like some weird show where they decided to not make them look cool and just make them look like shadows well i found out through the research looking to find out what was in the dlc to have the halo armor that if you got this dlc that gave you this extra world that after you completed a couple quests in this extra world you would get the the assault rifle from uh halo 3 and i'm like what what? Take my money. I will complete all of the quests necessary to make this happen. So I had to go to this place called Knothole Island, which was basically in Iceland, that after you get done with this quest, you turn it into the, the Middle East or something. And each time you do a quest in this area, it changes the season, which is crazy. But this, this little area is kind of 
awesome. It has like a really fun combat encounters and they, you really get a feeling for this game's combat, which the light are the small um, tweaks that they made to differentiate this from Fable 1 are fantastic. I ne I'm never bored with the combat in this game. I'm never annoyed with the combat in this game. I just feel like it flows a lot better. And not to mention that this area also has like some really sick puzzles. And I mean, they're not like fucking Indiana Jones puzzles or Tomb Raider puzzles or Uncharted puzzles or whatever game is about an adventurer who gets treasure but they're okay for a fable game i didn't expect them to be this much fun and i like the fact that you like bounce this ball around and use different attacks on it it really uh, emphasizes the the quickness that you can rattle through your combat because like one of my biggest gripes with the first fable game is like the bow became useless to use because you had to charge it up so this game just gives you a glock fucking based and then your like attacks feel like more fluid and you can bounce around a little easier and switch to them a lot faster and then your magic uh, you don't have like 800 spells to choose from they, they give you like a choice of like half the amount of spells but they all feel a lot more useful i don't know i like them i i'm kind of sticking with the swords thing because it kind of goes with master chief and since i have an energy sword i'm like cool and i know what you're thinking oh you pay about a dlc it's probably pay to win honestly i don't think pay to win uh counts in a single player game i mean in like a competitive game sure but if you want to pay money to be uh, like get better stuff in a game and just be fucking op i don't care it's a freedom of expression baby but the, the sword you get and the armor you get really isn't that good i'm gonna play with the master chief armor throughout the entire game but just know it's not that good and it, it i probably uh, are am worse for it and the sword's barely better than the starting weapon so honestly i kind of made myself worse for using this stuff especially the the energy sword as long as i did because i spent a long time using the energy sword i mean i'd pick up like maces and stuff and they were like way way better and i'm like but is it the energy sword no i mean look how cool the energy sword looks on my back bro i mean i wish that the energy sword would have been one of those things like in the dlc where it levels up with you and ends up being op by the end of the game i don't think that's pay to win i think that that's just something cool but honestly the fact that it, it doesn't do much damage after like the first area kind of sucks i mean where i started to see the cracks wasn't here because i, I ran into these hobs and i thought oh man these hobs are gonna to mess me up because the hobs were annoying as shit in the first game and they were tedious to fight and i honestly thought would they looked jacked in this game they look like they've been hitting hgh like crazy and honestly they weren't tough to beat at all and i was like oh maybe i can just run with the energy sword the whole game and i, I kind of tricked myself into this mentality i mean it was quick it was cool looking it was flashy i i also like the fact that when you kill stuff in this game unlike in fable one you don't have to run around like a dumbass with your dick caught between your legs trying to pick up orbs no they just you can just hold a button and they come to you then i found out uh, that there's another job where i can cut wood and here you go ladies sexy master chief lady cuts wood and then i pose for a statue where you get me my, my glorious humping i know the women right now and let me know in the comments you're probably juicing yourself you're all juicy goosey you're you're like a gusher down there so but anyway just comment whatever you want down in the comments leave a like leave a comment and subscribe to my channel because it's badass and i'm so badass that they made a statue of me look how sick i am look look a master chief statue in the middle of fable 2 this game is the best i love this experience so much well that was until i met overweight ursula here you see you meet this like she sings beautifully i was like oh man i'm gonna meet this sexy chick no this bitch is like the hulk meets like the blob and you have to escort her around this cavern while she fills up a jug and i was like oh this is boring i don't like it and the whole time you're like shooting stuff and watching her fill a jug and she's like why is she just so what 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 is with like some of these de developers and they're like you know it would be sick if we made a woman look like a man and then made her fatter and i'm like no one likes that but it's just one guy i feel like standing at his computer while he's designing her just stroking rapidly and he's like i'm gonna goo all over the screen i'm gonna goo it's gonna happen and he just like blasts off and he's like oh, oh, oh overweight ursula you're so hot I don't know, dude. In this whole section, I don't like uh, uh, escort missions to begin with. And this chick is annoying, dude. She's like... Uh, the worst not to mention that this was the first section where i ran into an enemy that my energy sword was no match for i mean this dude like comes out of the ground without a head and he just like 
whopped me. I hadn't upgraded myself. I hadn't done anything really. I think I added one uh, thing to Vitality to give myself a little bit more of a health bar so I could actually see it. And I, after this fight, I was like, oh, maybe I should actually try to upgrade myself and like do the things you're supposed to do in RPGs because apparently I'm not just the Master Chief God. Apparently I need to be humbled. And that, that, that hurts. And it hurts that it had to happen in front of overweight Ursula, you know? You ne like, uh, well, I mean, I, it's not that bad because I'm not trying to tap that ass. If she would have been like, like tight ass, uh, uh, juicy titty, uh, Sarah or something, I don't know. Yeah, uh, maybe I would have been a little more embarrassed. But honestly, at the end of the day, I wasn't too worried about what Ursula thought. But it still sucked that I was getting to the point where my energy sword wasn't quite making it anymore. And this whole quest ended up being worthless, ended up being a waste of time, you're doing all this stuff, and you're seeing the light go into the jug, and I'm like, why, why is the light going into the jug, this is the most interesting thing that's happened so far, I'm curious, curiosity had tipped my penis, and it was, it was twinkling dinkling, you know what I mean, and then this wizard shows up, he just kind of runs out, and he's like, overweight Ursula, your father, he's been kidnapped, and they want to do things to his chocolate, or his chocolate starfish, they want to like, like lick his chocolate starfish to death, and I'm like, whoa, this is gotten dark fast what's going on so i chase up I, I like well i wanted to chase up it there's a thing this game does another thing i don't like about this game compared to the last one instead of just letting me rattle through dialogue there's times oh wait he died yeah he we get there and he's just dead they they chocolate starfished him to death they just plowed that booty cheeks until he died and that's kind of sad but the thing that happens with dialogue and you'll see it kind of here while i'm just standing here is instead of being able to rattle through the dialogue it's like you kind of have to sit there and just wait and it's like, okay, I get it. But the sexy uh, wizard shows up. She's like, ugly Ursula, you need to come with me back to the Heroes Guild. And I'm like, F finally, somebody's taking her away. I don't want to hang out with her anymore. She sucks. Look, look at her. Why is her arms the size of me? I mean, my physique, I just upgraded myself to like, I probably look at just as ugly as she does inside. But I, at least I'm wearing a cool suit. But anyways, I end up doing some side quests at this point, and I meet this ghost lady, and this is one of the most weird quests of the game. She basically tells me that she was in love when she was young, and the guy was supposed to meet her here. He didn't show up, so she just unalived herself. She took a she took a high dive off of a off of the rocks and then died, you know. So she gives me a note to go try to uh, riz up her um, ex boyfriend and then give him a rejection note, which I thought was hilarious. So obviously, I put my riz game on high. I mean, you. You see how many red hearts are around me, bro? I'm the Risenator. I'm Captain Riz, uh, uh, Captain Rizoff. You know, I, I just destroyed it, and then I, I had the moment because he's actually not a bad guy. He just felt like they were too young, and he felt bad about it. So I had like a hesitation here, and then I'm like, Nah, I'm gonna reject his ass. I'm too young to get married. I mean, those were my only two options. Maybe if there was one that was like, I'm not ready to settle down, I probably would have done that because the dude ends up offing himself too. This just goes to show that they were actually perfect for each other because neither of them can handle rejection well at all. But in all seriousness, if you're sad and somebody's like, oh, I'm gonna, I, I can't, I can't do it anymore because this girl left me. Just remember, you will find another bitch and vice versa. You will find another dick way better than the one you had before. Do not go jumping off of cliffs just because you're sad. It is not the way to solve things. And honestly, I shouldn't have gotten bad uh, experience points for that. Because I was just mad chilling. What type of example are they setting for the kids, man? The kids. But anyways, I go to do my next story mission. And at this point, I am trying to run the energy sword hard. And in my head, I'm like, I can do it. I like the combat enough in this game. And no, dude, I'm getting whooped. Just like, watch how like little damage I do. Everything that I throw at these guys, they can block. They can shook. They can rock. And I, I said I upgraded myself, but I lied to you. I still was thinking that I could beat this game with that putting very little time into uh upgrading my stacks i was hoping the game would just do it for me like dragon's dogma or something because i can be quite indecisive when it comes to leveling myself up in games i, I honestly will be like oh, do i want to do this build do i want to do that build but i think if i start becoming a, like a real estate monger in this game i can just get enough money to like pay for enough like uh, potions or whatever and become god but anyways i get to the top of the tower and there's just this guy that i saw for two seconds at the beginning of the game just surrounded by swords and he's like i don't want to work with your boss he's a poopy head and this guy's like you're i'm gonna take you to the 
the boss, and he's gonna be like, all right, and he has zappy zappy fingers, and he has a floating island. Like, who just has a floating island? Like, we get it. You're cool. You have a floating island. Let's. Uh, how's, how big's your penis, though? Because I have a small penis. I bet yours is micro. You have a micro penis because you have a floating island. But after this, to cool down from all of this aggression, I decided to become a bartender and make the world a better place with alcoholism. Only to then go and have a boss fight against a troll because that's what this game is. It's like uh, Adderall driven crazed fa fantasy coke land. You at one moment you're a blacksmith, the next moment you're a bartender, the next moment you're a, a bounty hunter, only to turn around and fight a troll. Because this game's got edge, baby. This game's actually like keeps you going. My biggest problem with Fable 1 is it constantly felt like I was just slogging through the game. And yes, the story in Fable 1, when you actually get to hit the story beats, I feel like has a better story. But the fact that of the in-between to me was so uneventful. And yes, there was stuff to do. And yes, I could riz people. But the mechanics are better in this game. The fighting is better in this game. And even though this troll has like gimmicky shoot the spot points, I still think it's more fun to fight this troll than the troll from Fable 1. Because unlike Fable 1's troll, which was John Wick with rocks, you can actually dodge the shit this troll throws at you. And you have a chance to kill him pretty decently quick. I mean, this fight was... Um, began and was over in a timely matter, unlike the other trolls, which felt like it took me like 800 years to fight. But you then journey back to uh, the Heroes Guild, where they tell you you need to go fight in this tournament. Sounding familiar? Yes. This game is a remake, just like Evil Dead 2. That's why I brought it up at the beginning of the video, and I'm gonna hit these story beats every time it happens. Because just because something is similar to the last thing they made does not mean it's bad, because people argue all the time which is better, Evil Dead 1 or Evil Dead 2. In my opinion, it's Evil Dead 2. And so far, I'm enjoying Evil, or I'm enjoying Fable 2 much more than I enjoyed Fable 1. One, the combat is flashy, and it's fun, and it's quick, and it's you, it's actually, you can like hit the things you're going after, you can bounce between enemies, and even here, where I'm still using the energy sword, way past the um, point that I should have stopped. I should have stopped using this stupid uh, weapon long time ago, but I'm still grinding it because I feel like I can conquer the challenge ahead of me. Because I feel like the mechanics are on my side, and I feel like I can bounce between these enemies, I can throw magic at them, I can uh, keep myself mobile uh, when they get too close, I can switch to the gun real fast and pop them and then switch back, instead of having to wait for the gun to charge a shot. I mean, everything about the combat mechanics in this game keep it moving forward. And though Fable 1 had so much good going for it, I felt like the actual gameplay mechanics of the game uh, don't hold up well at all, and I feel like this game actually does. Playing through this game, I look at The Witcher 2, and that's a game I absolutely love, but The Witcher 2's combat sucks. It is like eating, a, like opening up a baby's diaper and licking it. Blech, disgusting. Don't ever do that. If you do do that, you are a sick person. And when uh, this game really started to hit it off for me is the section after I, I did upgrade my sword because all of a sudden werewolves are here. And this werewolf that I'm killing was actually a lady and all of the werewolves I'd killed before were her children, which I thought was kind of funny. But I accidentally didn't save any footage of me killing the regular uh, werewolves because, I mean... We've seen that. We've seen them. And fighting the white one's way cooler because down with whitey, baby. Yeah, I got progressive points today. Only to have ugly Urs Ursula push down an entire pillar in front of me and make me feel like a bitch. I was like, bro, I just fought a white werewolf and you're going to outshine me like that? Like, I go to the gym too. I know how to rep. But this didn't make me feel that bad because... My good boy found me some treasure. He was a good boy. Every time I, I love this dog, bro. He, and every time it gets hurt, I'm on the money about getting it, it, it safe because he's a good boy. And of course, after I had gone through this whole road, I found out that I could finish the second quest in Not Whole Island. And I want that gun, baby. I want that freaking gun. So immediately after I kill this hob on stilts, I go into this next section and, and do the next puzzle, which is kind of sick because it wants me to do like, uh, uh, like some emotes and then it gives me the orb and then I get to use my magic. And again, these puzzles aren't that complicated. It's just hit whatever prompt comes on screen, but I still thought they were enjoyable enough. And once once you're done with them, boom, door opens. You go down. Yeah, you do another puzzle because fucking these puzzles are fun. I don't know why. I, I do enjoy them. Even when I mess it up with magic, I still like figure out how to do it quick enough that I can win. And 
Yeah, I, I messed this one up a lot. Like, you can see I messed this one up a whole bunch. The magic one will screw me, especially with the swords. I mean, the lightning's way better. But, I mean, I don't want to I don't want to back off the swords, man. I, and the lightning, as cool as it is, not that cool. And then I get to obliterate some goddamn zombies. These are my favorite enemies to fight in the game. Not just because they die with one hit, but it's the way they die. They, like, explode, and then a dead face shows up in, like, smoke. How based is that? I mean, that's it's awesome. It, it's it's like when you, when you you know that you blast into your, your girl and she's wearing like an IUD and you know all of the that seed is just dying off in the ether bunch of potential children up in smoke no more potential do they have but anyways you get the little statue and you're done with the second quest or second quest in Knothole Island only I found out then that I need some stupid potion I after the, uh, the world's all water I go to that place to, to get the thing and you need a potion so I go and have my boy try to dig it up first place I'm like oh please be the potion you know what I find a god damn condom I found a condom in the dirt. I mean, I'm still probably going to use it. I mean, it's got a wrapper. Calm down. And then here's where I wanted to highlight how great the combat is in this game. I mean, look at me bounce around these people and just obliterate them. This is what this game's about. I mean, with Fable 1, it would just felt tedious. And when you had a bunch of people hit you at the same time, it just felt like there was no way out of it. This game, you can uh, like bounce around in a circle. And it's kind of like freeform combat like in Arkham before Arkham and better because because you can hit multiple enemies at one time. But now that my dreams of getting the elixir are squashed for the moment, I decided to do the little gauntlet challenge. Much like the first game, you go through diff or different phases and you fight different enemies. I do like the way this one's set up much more than the last game because each area is different. And not only the monsters change, but the area itself. Like you start in this like circular room, much like the first game, and then you're in a swamp killing zombies. And you know how I feel about killing the zombies. I mean, look at me just tear through these guys. Bro, they had no chance, bro. I was beating them. I was slapping some serious clit here. Do you see this? Says, slap the clit. Slap the clit. Oh, it's bulbousing? Slap it harder. Slap it harder. Make her squirt. That's the type of energy I had in this fight. And oh, man, look at all those orbs sucking into my ball sack. Or my clit. I have a clit because I'm a woman. Yeah, I tend to forget that because I'm dressed up like Master Chief. I mean, even in the next areas where most of them you do fight actual normal dudes, at least the, the scenery changes. And I did appreciate the fact that I'm like fighting them on a bridge with spikes all around me. I thought that was kind of cool. I, I just, I really like this whole gauntlet area. I, I thought it was really uh, imaginative, even though it's kind of ripping off the first game. I thought it did enough different to where it feels like its own thing. Again, Evil Dead 2, baby. The Crucible then has you go up against some werewolves like the white one I fought earlier, except for now it's more angry. So I roll it up and shove it into my vagina like it's a tampon, baby. Suck that blood up. You can't handle it. Hey, I got that women problems. Mmm. Did you see me headbutt that thing? Damn, bro. I'm such a G. But yeah, no, I like this little area. It's got like bridges and stuff that I didn't utilize. But I, I like that it has, it differentiates itself from the last thing. Now, this is where it started to wane on me, right? The last game had a really cool scorpion that I fought. This one puts me up against the troll again. Now, it's the rock troll, which if you remember anything from my Fable 1 video, I loved the rock trolls in that game. They were kind of easy to kill. You could just kind of, once you figured them out. But this one's just a carbon copy of the goddamn ground troll just with rock. That's not cool. That's not based. Go suck a taint, bro. I don't know. At this point, I was kind of sick of this monster too, because every once in a while you get to where one's part of them, you just can't hit right and it's just lame but anyway after this i'm told that i need to go like finish up some tasks and i'm like oh the game my end of the game must be coming so i i like max out my bartending skills because i'm a goddamn god I'm a, I'm a i'm a living god i'm master cheeks baby master queef I, I i come in here and i serve beer like the best of them bro straight up earn that level five bartender i did this in blacksmithing too no flex just coolness but then i end up helping these two guys that lost the necronomicon after unleashing the dead so I have to kill like a hundred dead guys and you know how I said at the beginning of the video that this game is the evil dead 2 compared to the fable 1 you know the comparison I made yeah it's getting made in real time in the game meta fucking bullshit I don't know irony I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point all I know is I was right and you can suck my taint my balls and my shaft all of them gulp them down and then just hold them there for a while because that's your L in your mouth right now just start gulping baby because at the end of this you know what that little book is the necronomicon i was right about something it doesn't happen often
But they knew what they were doing. They knew that the Fable 2 was their Evil Dead 2. So, I'm right. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I hear you clapping from wherever you're sitting on your couch watching this between uh, jerk-off sessions with Warren. But then I decide it's time for me to get hitched, baby. I I've wasted enough time. So I knew this girl from back in the, the knothole island who used to not have a top on because it was too hot. And I decided she was a little bit brown, just like my real-life real wife. And I was like, I gotta lock that down, bro. I gotta get that brown pussy down, dude. I gotta make sure that I am the progressive, lesbian, multiracial couple let's go dude and I, I i i get her i give her the ring i get her locked up and i'm like it's like you got to take her home you got to take her home if you want to be married for real z's i'm like no sweat babe i'm a real estate monger I, I have a house on the other side of town so it's a fast travel away and i run up the bedroom stairs and i'm like oh, well, i i gotta consummate this bitch and i'm right away dude i'm like where is she where is she we gotta get to this bed come on come on i mean you slow as shit but i mean i gotta lick your clit come on I, I give her the old um uh uh come back to my place with me type of deal it's a little cup of coffee and i was I wasn't sure if i could just jump in the bed yet but i found out later once you're married bro they just want that clit energy in their mouth bro they want you to eat that pussy and of course i'm having unprotected sex it didn't even give me the option for protected sex but then she gave me a gift bro this is the type of bitch she is bro she took that that clit and then gave me a gift so you know what that means i need to do something for her Yeah, that's better. Now, knowing I have, like, a long time before I see her again, because I have just a feeling where this game's going, I have to fa bid her farewell, go get the milk, my pack of cigarettes, and I head over to the docks for my journey, baby. And all ugly, or uh, overweight Ursula is following behind, and I'm start she's starting to, like, warm up for me. I mean, I'm even, like, willing at this point that at when I get up to the dock, these guys are like, you can't take any of your stuff, and I'm like, are you serious? I can't have my glock or my sword this this trip's gonna be whack we're not going to disneyland where glocks and swords are allowed actually i don't think glocks and swords are allowed at disneyland it would be a much funnier adventure though as soon as you get to disneyland mickey mouse is there like oh hey how are you uh -huh. and you're just like ah mickey blah 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 and then you just take minnie mouse and just plow the shit out of her pussy on top of Mickey Mouse's freshly dead corpse. Whoa, I got a little too dark. But anyway, I give ugly Ursula my my weapons and all my gear because I'm like, she seems pretty tight now. I mean, she's warming up to me. She had a good singing voice at the beginning and now she's kind of being a homie and less annoying. So I, I embark on a journey and I get this super sick cutscene. I do like the cutscenes in this game. They're never too long, but I did like the, the boat and then I'm like going up to the island and it's like all creepy and got like lights and stuff because of the magic. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm vibing with this i mean this light looks like a waterfall so it kind of tricks you it's like is it a waterfall or is it just me juicing in my fucking drawers i don't know dude i don't know but it's it's not a waterfall it's just magic light who knew that was coming I do have to say, I have to give this trip like a 4 out of 10 though, because I can tell this boat captain's drunker than shit. I mean, check out the way that he pulls us up to dock. Do you see all this swerving? Not cool, man. Not cool. You need to leave the Jack Daniels alone. Leave that Jack Daniels sauce back on the mainland. And right after this cutscene, I see how big I've actually gotten. Now, it hasn't really occurred to me the type of monstrosity I've created under this suit. If I know one thing about Fable 1 is when I embarked on the area that I feel like this game's gonna become, is I look like a goddamn monstrosity when it took me out of my armor. I looked like a goddamn buffoon. And when I'm listening to this guy talk to me, and I just don't want to listen to him because he shot me in between the fucking child boobs. I mean, they weren't even developed yet, and I I have scar tissue because of you, dude. You don't know how to not shoot children. That's like one of the main things you're taught in life is not to kill or hurt kids. Leave the kids alone, bro. And I, I find out that this game decides that it doesn't want to make me a, like a prisoner. I'm a guard now, bro. It's time to lock these people down and beat them. Beat them senselessly because that's what I want to do as a guard. Actually, no, that's wrong. I decided I wanted to be a cool guard. I didn't want to be the douchebag guard that beats his prisoners for no reason. I'm going to 
gonna treat them like people, man. I'm gonna treat them like goddamn people because that's what they are. At the end of the day, they're people that did bad things. Except for in this game, they did nothing. This isn't like a real prison. This is like magic prison where everybody is uh, zapped for some reason. Because first, as soon as I meet this my boss, he just like shocks the shit out of me because he wants me to listen more. And I'm like, bro, maybe if you tried a better uh, approach than hitting me with like 80 tasers on my dick, maybe I'd listen to you. How about you suck on my middle finger? Yeah, how about you suck on my middle finger? That's right, I, I just flipped him the bird. That shows how based I am. Fuck that authority. And he's over there like, respect my authority. And I'm like, no, man, no, you just keep zapping me for no reason. And I start to see a theme throughout this little area. Now, is this area better than Fable 1's prison area? Yes, because I don't have to listen to any poetry. And the, 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 like, the leader of this area isn't like a douchebag. So he, he's a douchebag in a different sense he's like ominous in fable one he was just like i'm angry but i'm also into poetry and i'm like yeah this is kind of cringe this is kind of cringe the only part i kind of liked was the race but this game kind of has like like lore stuff going on in the background basically every guard that disobeys ends up losing some of his memory and so at me disobeying right now, I'm becoming basically just stupid. I'm getting like straight on early onset Alzheimer's in this bitch, but I don't care because there's one thing on my mind. My sexy lesbian wife back home, she will get me through this because she is a boyfriend free girl. Chris Chan nod, we salute you. And I just like, I'm getting tore up here because they, they were like, you just have to watch these prisoners. Make sure they don't get food. And I'm like, they look like they're going to die. So I'm going to give them some food. And of course, I get hit with the goddamn electric shock to the fucking taint, dude. Right away. I mean, they grabbed a hold of my roast beef ham sandwich down in my undercarriage. And like gave it full throttle shocking and not only that i at this point in the game i was like my monstrosity didn't look too bad because i still have armor but my chick straight up looks like a dude now like a big dude it's like every one of those muscle mommies they, they're like oh do i want you to give me some muscle mommies and i'm like bro you just want to have sex with a man that's what you want i'm just josh and have sex with whatever you want to have sex with be attracted to be well whatever you want to be attracted to i don't care uh, we all have our different preferences if you you want a chick that can crush your head between her thighs like a watermelon be my guest that's up to you and you'd probably be turned on by my main character because fable turned her into a monster but right here the, this guy wants me to kill my friend guard who's been like my friend throughout the whole game he's already forgotten about his family back home so he probably really doesn't have much to live for but i really hate this prick so I, every time he goes to like tell me to do something i want to hit him with the sword that he gave me and he just shocks the shit out of me and then kills the dude anyways so either way we would have had the same outcome so basically i'm hitting him with that anarchy symbol and then flashing him my clit right because you can suck that uh, that pound and shit down there the next mission is i'm supposed to go find this lost guard and i'm like all right how long is this shit gonna go on because i've been here like 10 years at this point i went from being a sexy 20 something to a 30 something my wife's probably sleeping with half the town at this point unless she's a good bitch that's just sitting there knitting or something or just like working our kegels to the point that when i stick my tongue in there it like cuts off the tip and i finally find uh this guard and i get zapped by this other guy who ends up being the good guy why is everybody just wanting to send 180 volts into my fucking anus what what's the point of that why does everybody feel it necessary to hit me with those charge i mean yeah do i put jumper cables on my nipples and attach it to my car every morning sure but that doesn't mean i want to do it in a virtual world too but me and him start like ass blasting every one of these guards that thought i was their friend the whole time it's like ha psych you will probably don't remember me anyway or if you do you were a fucking toe the line bitch and this is what you deserve you deserve death or less you stupid cuck that's right i'm a fucking g andrew tate energy but I finally get over to Douche Kugelar's apartment or, like, office, and I start fighting him, which was an okay fight. I mean, any time a boss fight has to summon in, like, 15 enemies to fight during the boss fight, it's not really a great boss fight. So I kind of just felt like he was just a geared-up enemy with way too many henchmen, which got kind of annoying because my sword feels like I'm slapping him with, like, I don't know, a used tampon. It's gross but ineffective. 
But I'm persistent. I, I, I push through it. I, I put my sword through his butt cheeks and floss like a goddamn captain. And my homie hits the ground, bro. He's all he's all juiced up and he goes Super Saiyan mode on my ass. He gets like all sorts of G mode. And he's like, oh, come on, come on. And we, we, we book our ass to the boats, man. Because we got to get out of here. At this point, we need to flee. So we load up and ship out, baby. Ship out just like everybody uh, shipped Chris Chan with his mother. I'm joking if you don't understand these christian references go watch a tom dark video man it gets real weird but i get on the boat and i'm just like cruising out i'm like finally gotta go home and see my wife and i get on the dock uh I, they give all my my junk back which is cool sexy wizard ladies there and teleports him away and i'm like tight now i can get back to like pointless shit that i wanted to get back to and i i i but i find that potion dude i find the potion i need now if you don't remember what i'm looking for is i need this a uh, pure extract so that i can get uh, a special item a very special item and the first store i checked had it so I book my ass back to this little gift store and sure enough I run over to the last table and I give my little trade my little sexy little trade and boom halo assault rifle I mean you can even see the excitement on master queef's like experience right now but you know what this means After I was done getting bee footage for uh, the, 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 the Halo thing you just saw, I met this uh, uh, Betty the Whore. I just thought that was hilarious, and she's got really nice tits, so I thought it was a good, like, breakaway moment. And I end up going and meeting up with Chris Chan. Now, I, you've heard the Chris Chan jokes. I felt like I, I, like, made this happen. I run into this person that's obviously a cross dresser or a drag queen, and... Chris Chan, looks like Chris Chan, and it wants me to go clear out some hobs, and I'm like, sure, I can definitely do that, or at least I thought it told me to, to, like, clear out hobs, I don't really know, I was too busy feeling like I manifested a destiny to make Chris Chan appear into this Table 2 game, but I go and ass blast some hobs real quick, I mean, these guys thought they were tough, but I'm Master Queef, baby, nobody fucks with me, and I just, like, clear them up, dude, I, I, I put the smack down raw on these cunts, dude, just blap, 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 squirt, 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 queef, 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 just killing it, gets me some treasure, I'm the goat, I'm the goat of this Fable 2 game, bro. I'm officially Master Queef. I'm the king of Fable. I mean, I haven't beat the game yet, so I'm not really king. But anyways, I go to tell uh, Christian that I've done the job, and bro gets mad at me. He's all pressed, and I'm like, eat some lead, you stupid bitch. No one pulls a sword on me. I don't care what you look like. You're getting the same answer. Ten shots down the rifle. And so I decide that I need to cool off. So I go back home and rush up the stairs. And instantly, I know I'm getting some unprotected sex. So I load that shit back up. And my, my wife, look how happy she is. She hasn't had sex in ten years. She needed that, that little, like, cunt blowout that I just gave her. And I ended up deciding to run back to this, dude. Now, I didn't put any footage of him in I don't think earlier on so yeah he was some dude I lent money to and I honestly didn't expect anything back but the bro like gave me like 15 grand dude he's like the king of this little town now he turned it from the slums to the winning stage and I mean I, re I respect that hustle because this whole game I've been just like buying houses and renting them out not in like a slumlord capacity which I thought about doing but I'm trying to be a good guy and then I just went back to blasting people up I mean I did this little uh this little joint right here where a bunch of bands were being some tool uh probably they were probably like grabbing women by the pussy or like slapping uh slapping guys dicks or something anyway i was hired to kill them so i started going after them i'm like no more slapping guys dicks 
Uh, you, I, I heard about it. You zip the pants down, you yank the dick out, and then you slap it. What kind of monster are you? And then, like, grabbing up women's dresses? Disgusting behavior. So I have to shoot them in the face, and in the dick, and in the toes, and in the clit. I mean, I've said clit so many times in this video. Because that's my thing, baby. That's my thing. I love it. I love it. I, that They're juicy and beautiful. But I do eventually get caught up with these guys, and it kind of sucked because it was one of those moments that I couldn't really use my gun, and anytime that happens, I'm still stuck with the shitty sword I had. It's not as bad as the energy sword, because that shit is long past due. But, I mean, when, I, when I'm stuck in these tight quarters, it isn't my thing, man. It just doesn't work for me. But I eventually go back to the bar to do some main questing, and I meet up with old ugly Ursula. But I'm gonna change her name to Busty Betty, because she has turned a tide in my mind, and I'm starting starting to like her. Her character development has worked enough on me that no more mean things are being said her way until she pisses me off again that is. But we head off to go meet up with the dude I broke out of prison and we decide to storm a tower. Well they were gonna storm a tower. I'm like bro I'm gonna sit back here and snipe because I have an assault rifle from Halo. Do you not understand how cool I am? And these guys are like wait but we gotta run and use swords. I'm like stop being pussies. Get yourself a fucking machine gun from Halo and just tear into some assholes because that's how you play fable if you if you like if you're watching this video and you're wondering oh should i play fable it's on game pass sure do it but then you should also buy the dlcs that allow you to become halo uh the halo man in fucking uh fable land it, it's worth it it is goaded it is uh, fucking based it's all the skibbity toilet it's the best I mean, just look how cool I am. Everybody's trying to run up on me, and I'm like, oh, that's cute. I have a gun. I have a gun. I am the reason why swords became irrelevant is because I have bullets. Bullets are better than swords. Like, I, I, at this point, I started to realize how history worked in the real time, you know? Because there was that age where everybody was using, like, arrows and swords and stuff. And then all these guys were, like, running after me, head on, trying to slash me. And I just put them in the fucking dirt like the dogs they are. And I was like, oh, this is how history happened. Bro just pulled out a goddamn gun and then ended all sword fighting forever. It became some weird rich person sport where they go and use really thin fencing swords and do like the gay fencing stuff. I mean, if you fence, it's cool-ish. I mean, it's cool that you're still sword fighting, but go get yourself a gun and go to the shooting range. It's way more effective. And then a, a, a triangle, upside down pyramid attacks me, decides to just hit me with some electricity, and I'm like, bro, uh, rock, paper, electricity, Glock. Dead. You're done. You're done. Suck it, dude. Chest out. I said it with my chest out, boy. Until the game humbled me with this protecting stage. I have to protect the dude while he opens up this portal. And there's straight up these commander guys that we met during the prison era. There's like a bunch of them this time though. And they can just like neo dodge bullets for some reason. Like who died and made you the goddamn Matrix? Andrew Tate? Did Andrew Tate die? Is he dead? I mean did Greta Thunberg get him? I mean I don't understand. How did her uh how did her like feeble alcohol scene it Syndrome ass, go and find Andrew Tate and put him in the ground so that these motherfuckers in Fable 2, way before the, their shit or their relevancy ever happened, can dodge bullets. Now, if you could put that together and make sense of what I just said, good for you and I'm proud of you. You, you have like all of the riz to make this shit happen, but eventually, eventually, I do. But like, see, see how he, uh, like bullets just don't work on these guys. It's just this part irritated me because I was like, finally in this game i mean i was having fun with the combat way before this right way before this but now i was like all right this shit is slapping some clit seriously slapping clit and not like not like like uh, i got a finger in there no it's like slapping the uh like using their, their feet to slap the lips open and then just full arm swing in there and then these guys had to ruin my fun like what kind of douchebags and this section went on forever dude i was constantly bouncing around shooting shooting slice slice and my sword doesn't feel like it's doing anything anymore and i'm like but i'm already locked in here it's not like i can just quit this quest like a bitch and then go find something else to do or find a new sword or waste a bunch of money or and shit no i have a gun that, that beat all that beat like an entire alien race I am not giving up. I am running away into this portal because that's the end of the mission. And it teleports me 
to a land where this guy like pulls me into a cage. Now I didn't get footage of him pulling me into the cage, but he looked gross. And he ends up getting eaten by the fog. And I'm like, bro, what the heck is going on with this game? And my dogs ran off at this point. And I'm like, why is my dog gone? He's such usually such a good boy. He's such a good boy. And then I see him. I see him running up in the distance like a good little boy. And he's got the keys. I, I thought I hated my dog for a second. And, the, and he got my back again, dude. He's there for me. Not all, not everyone's there for you in life, you know? And sometimes you just need a cool boy to, to get you out of the jail cell. But anyways, yeah, he comes around and he gives me the keys and because he's, he's a, a good boy. Only for me to instantly start fighting a banshee who can summon the children from the Bioshock games. You know, the ones that wander around with the goddamn, like, uh, big daddies? Which is a creepy, like, thing. Like, that whole game, I love the Bioshock games, but it's a little weird that little girls run around with big daddy. It's just creepy, and I get it that it's a horror game, but still... But yeah, the Banshee was no sweat, dude. I mean, they, they can you can throw as many children as you want at me. I have a gun. And we all know how that... <laughs> we all know... I'm not going to make that joke, bro. I'm not going to make that joke. I'm moving on. Yeah, the Banshee was easy to kill, dude. I mean, it was it was a fun enough... Uh, I mean, it was a fun experience. I mean, all these things that are, like, running through the water at me that I can't really see. And then, then like, ending it with just, like, ass-blasting this this uh, sexy space... Or space ghost now it's not a space ghost but whatever i'm gonna call it whatever the fuck i want because this is my video you're watching my video you're enjoying the the comforting sounds of me and i begin to realize something as i look around this little town and things are starting to rain like i've been here before there's something weird about it and as i like explore a little bit i begin to realize this is the town from fable one they got burned down and they killed all your family and stuff and i like this kind of nod to the past i mean it, it's like i don't know it, it's like a little nod to the past that's exactly what it is actually wow really good commentary king jiffy coats but even though i was kind of middling on the first game it was kind of refreshing to see the old bridge again because i did like this bridge it was very iconic in my mind i, I will go 10 years with never touching fable one again i will remember this goddamn bridge i, I don't know it's just too fucking iconic and you find a lot of uh, uh, like monsters here you know like the ghoulies you've seen it throughout the whole game and the really only change up that you have is the fact that you fight up banshee every once in a while i mean like right here i go down into this little area and they throw a bunch of ghouls at me and i'm like oh another headless ghoul like the one that uh that humbled my ass at the beginning of the game and i make him my bitch i make him such a bitch dude i look at look i just destroyed him with my gun and then these guys are always easy to kill because i can just blast through them with my shitty sword because i don't need to level up my sword to fight the easiest skeletons in the world still my favorite enemy to kill not because they're easy but because a little uh cum blast of ghost essence that goes into the air into a skull fight the other banshee she shows up i mean the second fight i i had it like fine-tuned like a wine and i just like cut i like blasted through it i mean i was coming on her chest with uh like full velocity and i got myself some treasure because i deserved it and then this was the most annoying thing ever i fought another one of these trolls and i officially hate them they suck they're annoying, they're tedious, and I think Fable 1s are just as bad. I don't know which is worse now. I mean, these aren't terrible. I still think they're slightly better than Fable 1s, but still a very tedious thing to deal with. So I go to this dude's house, right? I just, like, run right up in there because I got to meet him, and I've just fought a bunch of random crap, so I got to go, like... Figure out why I fought random crap to get to this weird dark town in the middle of nowhere. And I find this guy who's having a statue erected of himself. I talk about erectile dysfunction. That was a terrible joke, but I'm going to roll with it. But basically, he seems like a scumbag. And he's been young for a long time because he's got like this ritualistic uh, group that live in the mountains who he sacrifices people to. And he wants to get rid of this key and send it back to him. So you were, uh, again, enlisted on this mission. And he is like... Like, the embodiment of skill is what you'll later find out. But you go on your little mission. You go and find this secret, secret dungeon. And I'm not going to lie. The vibes heading into this dungeon are fire. Like, straight 
Wop wop fire. I mean, I've done a lot of caves slash dungeons in this game, and I think this one had the best aesthetic, hands down. I mean, even the door key, as similar as it looks to the other ones, still looks cooler than the other ones at the same time, which I appreciate. And once you get into the uh, the actual cave, there's like people on pikes and all sorts of like just grimy stuff on the walls, and you hear like a lady crying the entire time you're in there, which is kind of hilarious, but also so sad at the same time because like making a woman cry is kind of messed up i mean all my jokes that i say about women and stuff i still love them and they should be treated like normal people because they are i guess but anyways you, you just make your way through like any other cavern really but the aesthetic was really nice it was something i i did like every door that you walk up to i was expecting to find some treasure and stuff and there is treasure to find but every door's locked because that's how you get out of this joint and you get to this room with three chairs now when i saw this first thing i thought of was remnant 2 because that's something i recently played so the vibes were here but i met the crying lady who was just kind of teleported here to be sacrificed which i found it was really kind of messed up and because i am a man and, or I am a woman in this game who like is a voice for women I tried to shoot them and I'm like oh that didn't work and I come to find out that they they're gonna sacrifice you and if uh, either you have to be she's gonna be aged to become a gremlin a uh, old person who shouldn't drive or I'm gonna be aged to the gremlin old person who shouldn't drive except for I'm master cheeks so I really don't age I mean sure underneath the costume I could probably age but the helmet doesn't come off see I'm gonna do this game right unlike the halo show so i will never know how old i am underneath the mask because if, unless the game tries to make me take it off again which i hope it does not because i probably look like a goblin but hey, I mean, when everybody in every town's in love with me and wanting to get a piece of the roast beef hanging between my thighs, I'm really not that ugly, even though I'm old. So, Master Queef rises on, which is fantastic. And then I find out that the game gives me another, like, point where somebody comes into my ear and is like, you need to do the, all the quests in the area, because this is another place where the game's about to end. And I'm like, I've heard this once before, but screw it. Let's go do some quests. And before I do that, I wanted to go get a sword. So, I, I Run back to the tower, which is just full of people I don't like, that my sword feels like it's just slapping them with, like, the, the lips of my clit. And, no, wait, clits don't have lips. The pussy has lips. I apologize for my ab ab abhorrent uh, description of a vagina right there. But I move my way up to the top of the tower so that I can, like... Find this secret katana that I watched a YouTube video on that's supposed to be the best sword in the game so that I can stop using my piece of shit sword. And I fall into a big lake of water and I'm like, I'm gonna uncover your secrets. Just like women try to uncover the secrets of the penis, which there aren't very many. Just put it in your mouth or pussy. That's about it. And so I, I start pushing through and I get to meet a couple uh, a couple little uh, tests, a little uh, puzzle zones, as one would call them. Zones of puzzle. And they're much like the ones that I did in Not Island but way worse and not as interesting because not whole island is a dlc where they could actually go in and expand on things and this is just base game crap so i mean for what they were they were fine i just wanted the sword baby that's all i was after so i was willing to shoot all the orbs and follow any stupid uh, candle puzzle on the wall to get to it that my priority is not sucking at the game anymore not that i ever sucked at this game i mean once i got master chief's i mean master queef's rifle i could just cream through this game except for the fact when people get uh, too close to me. I need something to ward off people. It, it's just like when I wear nipple tassels in public. People know not to approach me because I'm a crazy person. So I want that same vibes but with the sword in this game. And so I finally go outside after doing this whole uh, dungeon area. Unlock the Dachini or Dachini or Peppercini uh, the Katana, whatever it's called. And then go right away to killing things. And God does this sword it slaps some clit. It is wonderful. It just creams through every one that I, I could possibly want it to cream through. I'm gooing in my pants right now over my excitement for the power of this sword, and I enjoy it. And after this, I decide, oh, I better go finish Knothole Island. Now, this last little area had, like, not as many puzzles, but a lot more enemy encounters, which 
which I thought was kind of uh, kind of a nice uh, dissonance from the last ones, you know? Because the last ones had a couple enemies and mostly puzzles. This one was like, enemies, enemy, enemies. And I got to really use my new sword, which makes me really happy. I mean, who doesn't want to use the new sword that they just obtained by doing silly puzzles? I mean, losers, losers don't want to use their sword after that. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner, baby. But yeah, the way this one worked in Not Whole Island was uh, you basically hit the orb. It goes to another area. That area is full of enemies. You go to that area, beat the shit out of them, floss their butt cheeks and anus with your sword, or you shoot them in the in the uh, tip of the penis, give them a sounding rod of bullets, and then you uh, move to the next area. And you kind of do that over and over again. And eventually you open a door and then you go to like this steampunk area that's just got a bunch of like, I say steampunk, but it's really just a bunch of pipes. Because that's all steampunk is. It's like, oh, Oh, have you did you ever see 1800s England well let's add pipes and then uh, so I do that I go to that last puzzle which uh, I have here it's it's tedious and annoying and garbage I mean I couldn't use my uh, swords on it because my swords take too long to charge so I had to like actually buy a new spell to use on this puzzle which was kind of irritating i never used the lightning spell again after this but i mean for the little moment that it mattered i did it then the game throws another troll at me i don't know if it's ever gonna stop it ain't never gonna stop it just doesn't they just keep throwing these trolls at me to the point that i've gotten really annoyed with them like before in fable one and to give roses where roses are due the first fable was like here's a rock troll and then the here's the ground troll and they fight completely differently and i like that this game is just shoot shiny object and even though i kind of got to where i was liking him again it still isn't as good as the last game i i don't like any gimmick boss when you could just make him cool but eventually you do get the little uh, uh statue that turns the place back to being a freezing iceland so it's gone from desert i went from freezing to desert to um water to back to freezing and basically all the people in the town are like why don't you give us power because the mayor's an incompetent idiot and he offers to pay me and i'm all for being a capitalist but i i just don't want to like leave this guy in charge because he's an idiot if the townspeople would have been willing to pay me to do it i would have been cool with it but i was like screw it i'll give it back to the town uh, you guys will turn into venezuela soon enough and i found out right here that everybody wanted to marry me so i picked the hottest one and decided to make them my second wife looks like i'm mormon now anyway so i did you i'm gonna show you right here the the cutscene that i i i, I kind of forgot to show you earlier it's not as good as the cutscene from fable one which you'll notice anytime they do these storybook things from in fable 2 they do not look as good as fable ones did now the cutscenes look better in this game but not these little like story time shits regardless of cutscenes though what's more important is that i consummate this marriage god damn it because i am a man who consummates a marriage and right away i lead her to the bed and she's like oh please take me so hard master queef and i'm like oh i will so i instantly gear up for unprotected sex and you know what that means after we're done i gotta do something ah much better Anyways, after that, I leave her to be alone for the rest of eternity, just like my first wife, to go kill ghost pirates, because who wants to be married sitting at home being all bored, and when you could be killing ghost pirates? Who doesn't want to do that? Oh, we can't even have kids, so it's not, I mean, that's, oh god, that's actually really offensive. I, I say a lot of horrible things, but you can adopt. I guess it could have adopted with her. Is there adopting in Fable 2? I don't know. I, I haven't spent enough time with either of my wives to find out, because I'm hunting ghost pirates. Who doesn't want to go to an old timey bar and kill ghost pirates when you have to be you could be raising children Ew gross god this is weird considering I'm gonna be a father one day Maybe one day I'll just wake up and I'll be like ah honey a uh, child of mine Looks like it's time for me to go hunt ghost pirates and then just never show back up Even after I go and uh, kill all the ghost pirates like a badass suck up all their essence so I can turn it into XP like a goddamn g like i'm goddamn g man lives i wait isn't that a youtuber i don't know i then conquer their captain turning him into ghost whisper pussy juice on the ground on his own ship because i'm a g 
I'm the goddamn god of killing ghosts. I mean, I'm the ghost buster. I'm the ghost sucker. I just get all the goo down my throat and just gulp, gulp, gulp. That's how good I am at killing these ghost pirates. I mean, the captain was nothing to me. I use air swords. Oh, you are a ghost with a ghost sword? Well, I have air swords, you stupid mother trucker. Suck on them titties. Get down. Uh, those titties are so long that they're like basically chest penises, and you're just gonna gulp them down. And obviously, after killing ghost pirates, I have to go find their treasure, duh, so I go do that, because ghost pirates and treasure, that's what life's all about, not raising families and staying with your wife, gross. If you're out there and you're thinking, wow, he, he seems to not like his like, marriage and stuff. No, it's not true. I'm talking about him Fable, baby. I'm talking about him Fable. If you really think you're going to go find ghost pirates out there and you're going to leave the person you're in love with, or the two people you're in love with, in my case, in Fable, being all Mormon and shit, just don't. Just don't. Keep keep living your life. Have two wives in two separate towns. I mean, it's you're going to be too busy with that anyways. I mean, what are you going to do? Go get a third wife and a fourth wife? That's insane. I mean, I barely have enough time on my docket to do these YouTube videos and work a full-time job and fill out my honeydew list. Could you imagine having two honeydew lists or like four? Gross. You don't have time to fight ghost pirates. But anyways, I, I get uh, uh, hired by this grandma to go find her son, and so I go kill a bunch of zombies. And he's kind of a dweeb because he's on an adventure, but he can't even fucking adventure. What a loser. What a geek nerd. What a little nerd. I should have just left him there to die, but I... I didn't think that was an option so yeah this was kind of a lame quest out of all the little side quests i did I, when i was finding this dweeb i was like well why are you such a dweeb now that i feel like i've uh, buttoned my t's and dotted my y's i can finally talk to old uh, douchebag mcgee this time he's getting his picture taken and the dude's like it's gonna take like three months for this to get done he definitely doesn't like that so he does end up shooting him which you'll see in the background but i just want to talk about how this guy do tries to double cross you here only for like that like the hand of God to show up, whatever the evil organization is, show up and just start obliterating everything and they want him dead too. So we, we uh, hightail it into these caves and these caves have some of the most fun shooting gallery moments. Like, you can use your sword and actually go through and, like, fight them hand-to-hand. -hand. That is an option. Or use magic. But the the distance you have between you and the enemy a lot of times is just, like, made for me to fully live out my Master Cheeks fantasy, right? I'm I'm here. I'm, I'm in this game. I'm queer. And I want to shoot some people in the, in the, in the genitals, you know? In the genitalia. Shoot them in the genitalia. That's just kind of what, what I did here. I mean, it felt like more of a shooting gallery section i mean i really got a rpg my way into being a uh, master chief and fable which is perfect it's honestly perfect i really liked this whole gauntlet that you go through through these caves i thought this was really cool and i thought it was leading up to something grand and a beautiful and i was really excited to see what fable 2 did with the end of the game especially after this how do they top this this is insanely fun I mean, the sheer spectacle and the amount of people I dropped in this area just made it, like, this is going to be a section in this game that will always ring in my mind when I think of Fable for now, from now on, and now until ever. Now until I'm uh, looking at my kid, I'm like, remember the game from my day? I'm gonna be like my dad. I was super good at Snake. Who plays Snake, father? That's for dweebs and weirdos. I, I make my final push toward the exit of the cave. I'm just like... And trying to enjoy this. Now, people will continue to run at you forever in this area, which I figured out. I actually cut some of the footage because you, I'm, I'm here for a very long time shooting people. Because it's just awesome. I'm shooting people off of a bridge. Like a goddamn, uh, like, uh, Spartan for the UNSC. But in a storybook, which I've said way too many times. And then when I do have to get, like, when people think that they can shove a sword up my anus, I'm like, no, no, no. I have the Dakiki uh, Katana, which is, like, God tier, S tier juiciness. And I blast through them, but I decide, you know, I've done enough. I, I should take my souls and move on. It's time to see where this story goes. Never mind, I'm shooting again. I'm shooting again because it's cool and based. It's based to shoot enemies in games. But no, I'm seriously done. I'm seriously done. I, all joking aside, I get through. I cut this open because my sword can just blast through uh, two by fours. And I go outside and it's all atmospheric and the sun's setting. And I'm like, oh, cool. Now what's gonna happen? What are you gonna do? What kind of adventure am I going on now? And I listen to these guys talk for a long time, and basically the douchebag guy decides to join us because an enemy of my enemy is my friend type shit. And he blows up the uh, exit to the cave so that we're we're free to do as we will. 
or we can, or whatever, whatever the saying is, where we're free to jerk off into a can. And then uh, a stupid fucking upside down pyramid shows up, and I have like a boss fight against it. And is it any different than the regular enemy that's a pure upside down pyramid? No. But does it take longer to fight? Absolutely, and it spawns in enemies the whole time. But it really isn't difficult because I'm god tier at this point. It just kind of sucks. I mean, for a precursor to what I'm hoping is a, a grand spectacle blowout, it's not terrible, but it's, it's just kind of middling, you know? I hate when they, any game takes a regular enemy and turns them into a boss. I've always thought it was annoying. It's like, oh, you're just a geared up version. I mean, if you look different and you, you have very similar mechanics to other enemies, that's fine. It's when you're the same shit, I think it's annoying. Like, how hard is it to just uh, reskin something? Like, that could have just been like a floating skull or something and it would have been way cooler. At least it's not something I've already seen 15 times. But you guys decide to regroup and you're gonna meet on top of the... the and you're like, we're gonna go to the little stupid place that you uh, started the game. I'm like, alright, so we get on top of this stupid mountain. And everybody's like, get in the center. Get in the center. We're gonna, we're gonna supercharge you. We're gonna like touch your nipples, play with your earlobes. We're gonna, we're gonna spread your, your pussy and touch your clit. We'll slap it. We're gonna slap it real good. We're just gonna get in there and slappity dab 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 and I'm like all right all right guys calm down what's going on and basically you know I said the thing about the the douchebag guy being like the essence of skill each one of your friends that you meet throughout the game are the three pillars of your combat the old, old uh but busty betty or ugly um olga what I was I've been calling her the whole game she's strength the guy you broke out of prison is will and they all supercharge you into Superpower Man. And this is the first of a many times where this game fucking flashbangs your eyeballs. And if I have to go through it, so do you. I'm an evil monster. <laughs> anyway, after you get done wiping the splooge out of your eyeballs, old bad guy shows up. And he's all sorts of, like, talky. He just keeps talking to you like, Oh, I remember when you were a kid. Then I was gonna kill you. And then he, like, makes everybody teleport off away and he's like yeah you think you can take the power for yourself because I needed to resurrect my family and I'm like bro they're dead move on he's like move on well I killed your wife and I'm like bro well good thing I got two of them and then like he's like oh yeah and then he started telling me like how he felt bad about killing me when I was a kid like but he was still young at that time and didn't understand what sacrifices need to be made and all this bullshit he's just spewing bullshit he's like oh I'm old and angry now I can kill a kid without even thinking about it. I go to a preschool and just shoot him. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be a bad guy like him. He sucks. And then he decides he's going to shoot me and my good boy takes the bullet for me. Like a good boy. He does die though, which makes me sad. But that doesn't matter because the dude still walks up to me all menacingly like. And he's going to shoot me anyways. So my dog sacrificed itself for nothing. For nothing. I mean, anytime it, uh, there's a sacrifice in something where it doesn't mean anything, I'm just like, well, cool. Good for you, but you still did nothing for me. And this is where the game decides to flashbang me again, like, BLAM! I have glaucoma now. Gotta smoke the marijuana. And now I'm back to being a child and hanging out with my sister. Now, this section, for the longest time, was kind of a snore. I, I like, get the- I get what they're trying to do with it, and I feel like it does work in a sense. It can be very powerful, but I'm basically just doing odd tasks like I did at the beginning of the game. So, I mean, if it would have had, like, me do one task, right? Like, we're gonna go do one task, and it's gonna, like, make me bond with my sister again. That would have been way better than, like, oh, do all these tasks until the day ends. And I'm like, why, though? But, like, why? I mean, I get it. I I'm in a world, I'm like, this is the afterlife, and I'm back with my sister again, and cute. Whatever, but it, it boils down to me kicking chickens into a pen, which I couldn't even kick the last chicken into the pen because I ac accidentally kicked it over the fence, so I just fucked that up. And then it wants me shooting bottles all the time, and it's like, how many are there? It's like, you have seven more bottles remaining. It's like, I've shot like 20. Why are there so many bottles in this area? Like, what did my sister do? Wake up in the middle of the night, she's like, ooh, I gotta make sure that there's enough bottles for my little sister when she gets shot in the real world to show up here and shoot some bottles with me. We'll have enough to make sure it's fun, or we could just do like one thing and like hang out instead of me running around doing stupid shit. Like kicking chicken, sure it's fun, I, I do enjoy that in Fable games, but like why am I doing so many stupid tasks? At one point I was killing beetles again, like who cares dude? 
Who the fuck cares? And then when it gets dark, it's just like, go back inside. It's time to go back inside. And I'm, I'm sure I could have ran around and found the rest of the bottles, but I just didn't want to. There was nothing that was like pushing me to do that. But something wakes us up in the middle of the night and the gate opens and the sister's like, don't go over there. And I'm like, obviously I'm going over there, you dumb bitch. Like, you seem like you just want to hold me down. And I thought we were supposed to be like, like building each other up and you're trying to hold a fellow female down. You're like the patriarchy. And so I start running down this thing. And this is where the point of this little section gets made. I mean, this is brutal. This is brutal. You're, it's, it's even more dark considering you're a kid. I mean, anytime you put kids in really dark scenarios, it just makes it that much more epic and dark and creepy. I mean, every person I saw on a pike that was on fire, I was like, damn, that's a child looking at a dead person, which is way cooler than like an adult looking at a dead person. It's like the second It movie isn't as scary because they're all adults they should be able to handle that shit at this point but you end up getting the little magic box which would not let me push a on it but i eventually got it and then it takes me through like my my the different uh, builds i had throughout the whole game and kind of runs me it's like uh, a flash of the story that is way too long i mean yeah cool it's it's cool to see my progression especially when i show up and i remember that i ran the energy sword at the beginning oh so goaded i wish it would have been actually good and then i just popped through i'm now i got a different sword and uh, i finally have my gun goaded and then and then it just like keeps turning and then i finally have my cool katana and uh, the world's at peace again and why did this have to go so long like what was the and then flashbang again only to, to to show back up at this temple thing that you you were at for like 10 years as a guard and i'm like okay this is it this is where i'm gonna have my final knockdown blowout against the old man this is gonna be a sick boss fight because the best part of fable one was the boss fight against Jack of Blades. So I bust ass up these stairs to get flashbanged for like a fourth time or third time. I don't know. I lost count at this point. To see him basically trying the same Riz I tried on a little bit ago. Trying to get all the essence from everybody. And I'm like, I don't think so, Chief. I went to the afterlife and got a magic music box. What do you think of that? Doesn't look like you have much of an option, do you? And then I open up the magic music box and it just like blasts him with a laser or something i don't know it's like stopping everybody from like giving him essence it, these cutscenes take forever too and because they're not like regular cutscenes where they're all pretty these are like the in-game ones that seem to just outstay their their their, their time they, they, they take too long like seriously how long does it take to destroy somebody with a music box i mean come on man and then i i, I spoke too soon because the game flashbangs me again dude i was sitting playing this at night time and every time this happened i felt like somebody was like just straight up like i fucking my holes dude like old bubba showed up in my my living room and was like open your eyelids here comes the penis and then this guy just starts dialogue dumping so i'm like fuck you dude let's start the boss fight and he dies that's my boss fight are you seriously just me ending dialogue by using a gun that's it and then old uh thesa or whatever her name is the hot way a mage bitch shows up and then's like you have three options either you free everybody or you bring your wife back or you get a bunch of money and i'm like i don't care at this point i want a boss fight is there not a fourth card that says dope boss fight so I just decide to let my wife be dead because I have another one. It's not like it's that big of a deal. And I'm just not Mormon anymore. Oh. And that's that's the end of the game. That's it. You, you, your dog, your wife's dead. Your other wife's fine. And then the game's over. You get to see this pillar do some, like, fucking magic light shit. And I still think that this is a more fun game than Fable 1. But this ending is fucking dog shit. It's garbage. It's, I mean, it's a good ending for the story. It's a bad ending for gameplay. I mean, where's my boss fight? The last boss fight was an upside down pyramid. Are you joking? That's all I get? I dress up as Master Queef, goddammit. And then everybody teleports off to their new little land. And you're like, cool. Like, just leave me alone. U Ugly Ursula is now a, uh, gonna be a fucking Buddhist or something. I don't know. I don't know, it was dumb ending. It was dumb. Where's my boss fight? Where's my sick fucking blowout? Where's the cool ending I was wanting for? I have been a good boy this whole game to get the good ending, and this is it? This is what I get? I get to hear dialogue in a room? 
You're crap. And to think I compared you to Evil Dead 2. I mean, I feel bad for making that comparison throughout this whole game at this point. I mean, Evil Dead 2, you get a chainsaw for a hand and become a badass at the end of the game. Yeah, I became a badass at the end of the game, but... I mean, really? This is it? At least uh, she has nice cleavage. That's all I got for you guys. Catch you later. I hope you enjoyed my Fable 2 review. I I'm playing you out with the wedding cutscene because this is more interesting than the actual final ending of the game. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love Fable 2. Still think it's better than Fable 1. And until next time, catch you later.